After seven years of legal delays and decades since the murders, the Canal Killer trial finally began. Brian Patrick Miller he is facing the death penalty, charged with kidnapping, sexually assaulting, and killing two young women in 1992 and 93. And a warning, some of the details are too graphic, so we're choosing not to share them, but this story still might be disturbing. Our Zach Crenshaw was in court today as attorneys made opening arguments. Today in court, pictures were shown of this sunny slope canal with castles and coasters in the background. But back in 1993, this was a crime scene after a second young woman's body was found floating in this canal. Today, more than 30 years later, the trial for the suspected canal killer began as Brian Patrick Miller was in a courtroom for opening arguments. DNA evidence in genealogy led cold case detectives to Brian Patrick Miller in 2015. He's charged with murdering 21-year-old Angela Brasso and 17-year-old Melanie Burnus, whose mutilated body was found floating in a canal in September 93. Angela's clothing had been cut from her body. The details, so horrific, were choosing not to report many of them. Monday, prosecutors argued Miller even wrote out his plan. Characterized by some as fantasy, unfortunately that fantasy became a very harsh reality. The target of, of this fantasy, if that's what it was, was a young woman about 17 years of age. It included taking certain tools along, a long bladed knife, a carving knife, a garbage bag to hold body parts. Miller's defense team never tried to convince the judge another person murdered Melanie and Angela. Instead, they're arguing the 49-year-old father had such an abusive childhood that the trauma caused him to develop dissociative identity disorder. That the Mr. Miller that sits in front of you today, Brian, is not the Brian that committed these horrible offenses. He suffers from complex dissociative disorders, and those are trauma-based disorders. As a result, he has no access to that information. Now, there were no relatives in court today for either victim. Nearly all of those family members have moved out of the valley. But I talked to three friends of Melanie Burnus, and they said they've been waiting on this day for nearly three decades, and they're eager to see their friend's suspected killer held accountable in court. Zach Crenshaw, ABC 15, Arizona.